Well, you know, one of the things that's nice about so many of the library resources themselves being digital is that once you teach students how to access things, you know, they really do have almost full access. There's very little that they, you know, the occasional book, but other than that, um, they can get lots of information through the databases and so on. They can, and, and they just need a little bit of instruction usually about where to go if they don't remember or haven't had that before. Um, yeah. Sometimes instructors tend to think they know things that they don't know. So it's yeah. always good to have a session and just make sure that they're on the same page. Yeah, I teach an upper division course. And so, you know, we expect them to be using uh, slightly more specialized databases in our field. And that's the one piece It's just, but it's something I can do in the classroom, you know, uh, take them to the library website and show them some of the, uh, the particular databases we expect them to check out. Um, because they know the moves. It's just, oh, here's one more piece, you know. And so uh, that's really nice that they're getting all of that in, in the, at the freshman level because then when you have to add something on, it's just adding a piece. It's not starting from scratch. Right, that they've had at least, it's, you know, we, you call it, you know, the scaffolding where you start out with the basic and lead, develop mm -hmm. the skills as you go. And that by the time they're in their, in their courses and their major that they've become pretty adept at finding and evaluating is the goal. These are the objectives for the day, the things we're going to hit upon. And I know there are some, there's a couple slides later on that Tracy will want to talk about if hopefully she'll be here by then. So when she shows up, I hope she'll just speak up. Provide contact information, um, which are, we want to really emphasize that contacting your liaison librarians is, is a good starting point because they are the people that are going to know um, your, the disciplines and the resources and hopefully you already do interact with them. We're going to talk about how we uh, implement, get our infl information literacy into the faculty instructional objectives. That's how we work together as co-curricular partners. We are going to highlight some tools and highlight resources. I'm sure, Tra I, know, I mean, I know about copyright and OER. Hopefully, Tracy will be here to talk about those things. And she is also doing another workshop next um, week about OER specifically. If you are interested, then that is the place to go when she is going to be presenting about OER with Rebecca Dillon, who is also present. So who to know? We have librarian liaisons. Um, in all of the disciplines that you can see here. They're mostly divided up by college, but we also have some, you know, CHAS is pretty broad, so I'm social sciences, and then you can see there are some that are broken up, uh, even in the, in the uh, health professions. So there's always somebody that's gonna be, be that contact person for collection development, reference, and instruction. Also, you may have times that you may need uh, to contact someone in circulation when it comes to materials, especially reserves and that kind of thing. So you can find in About Us, we have a library directory. These links are in the presentation, but I'm just gonna jump th through the website uh, so you can see how they align. So in all of the, here's all of the personnel, library personnel in all of the different, um, libraries and they include the staff as well, not just the liaison librarians. All right, and people to know, Leslie Todd is our instruction coordinator. Graduate studies librarian is Kristen. These links go directly to their email and I'm the distance learning librarian. So I do, the, you know, I do distance learning all of the time um, with mostly with SPS, but with uh, on-campus classes as well. So these are the links that are here, so you can uh, refer to them later. All right, so these are basically all of the tools that we can um, provide for you. Using the library web pages, we can do instruction synchronously or asynchronously. We use assignment guides, topic guides, discipline guides, and we can present synchronously during a Zoom session, or we can do uh, asynchronous tutorials. We have a lot of tools, tech, uh, technology tools that we uh, can cre create guides for and tutorials. 
we have discipline pathfinders and we also have an A to Z list for the, for the databases so, you, so students and faculty can easily find the databases that we have. We Karen, also have- can I ask you a quickie question? When, you know, sure. uh, so the, the asynchronous uh, instruction, let's say I'm using assignment guides. Um, uh, are these some of these things you guys have on the shelf? Are there some standard ones? Are they all specialty products that get- There are some that would be, uh, we can create, you can easily do a screen capture and create a tutorial using uh, Cam using Kaltura is a tool that we use for, for that. Okay, so I get here's my let me ask my question more directly. So faculty, is there someplace a list of what you already have kind of available for, let's say people could post within their courses. And, and then, of course, there's the invitation for you to do something specialized. Is that right? Right, right. So there's general tutorials for the different resources, different, different uh, databases, particularly that I'll show, I'll show you where you find those. Great. And we could, those could be pulled out. Some of them are created by us and some are created from vendors that created okay. the databases. So, and we do, I do them often um, for a particular assignment and a particular database for people in, uh, for courses that have a particular research assignment. All right, so let me get show. Um, let me demonstrate some of those things. So, as far as web pages go, the main our main library search is called Primo, and it's a discovery service. So that means it's supposed to look across all of the fee, all of the uh, resources that we have, and that's when it says everything. When it says everything, that means everything. Uh, however it will not search across every single database. And that's why we usually re re uh, refer people to go into their, refer people to go into their um, specific subject databases. So if you use books and more, it's essentially the library catalog, which everybody really knows what a catalog is. And the one, the, the, this is how you're gonna find your eBooks and your streaming videos on a particular topic. So if you, we're just gonna do a quick little topic. And then it's gonna find me all of my results below. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is limit it to available online. Because regardless of whether it's a, an ebook or a video, it's gonna show up here. So the main things that you need to know in order, once you've reviewed the content, in order to be able to post it someplace into Blackboard um, is to go into it, uh, click on its online access button, and you're not gonna to wanna to use the link um, from the bar, you're gonna to wanna to use the permalink. So permalinks are very important because they're the way that you can route your students to the resource and to share it. So you would use the permalink here. That's how you would share this. This is an ebook. Then you could refer them to specific pages or what have you. The same thing goes for the videos. It sends you directly to the link here. What they will have to do is, is log in and authenticate. So links are always the way to go when you're sharing content with students. Then they can authenticate, log in with their UIW credentials and you're all good. So if you hear once again, it's your permalink and that's what you would wanna post for them. You can also see that underneath it gives a um, explanation that us users may stream, display, publicly perform, et cetera. So you could watch them during the class if you wanted to. You could even, uh, this would apply later on you know, to showing it within a classroom, a physical classroom as well. Mm -hmm. So these are the ways that you can share yeah, what content sure we I have. So let's say I want to have students read um, something from that Edgar Allan Poe reader. So I yes. what I want, I inside a blackboard, I give it a little title and then I, you know, I uh, paste in the permalink and right. them straight to what I want them to read. Or view right. or well, it'll go through and they may have to probably where they will actually have to log in to get to it with their UIW credentials and then it will take them directly to the book. Oh, yes. yeah, that's fine. I, I just meant. Mm -hmm that takes them there. That's, that's right. It takes them there. Right. So this link takes them to it and then you would be able to tell them specifically what pages you wanted them to look at. Thank you. Sure. All right. So this is the way you find our streaming videos um, and eBooks. And then 
the links are, again, the links are also here. There's a couple of ways to get to databases. One is to use this find databases tab if you're all, if you are in the, um, in Primo, or else if you're from our homepage, then you can go into databases and journals and the databases list. So the list is here al alphabetically. However, you can also search it by discipline. We are going to be working this summer to optimize this list with the help of the subject liaison so that it'll be a very robust resource for people to use because um, that is a, it's really a remarkable way to find resources rather than just trying to, you know, look for them over here by keyword or hope, hoping that people know what the name of it is and looking alphabetically. So that's an important resource for people to be able to use. All right, so we've covered, these two links are here for you to use later. And also we have LibGuides, which we explained. We call them LibGuides and in, the, in, in, the, uh, in our pages, they're called research guides. So from the homepage, they're here under Quick Links Research Guides. So we have three main types of um, data, of, uh, sorry, LibGuides. And the course ass or assignment guides are the ones that are tailored towards a particular course and their research assignments. So all of the materials that are in the course guides will be tailored to the assignment based on what format they're in, um, what the assignment actually states that the students are supposed to be using. So they get taken down at the end of every term so that if they need to be resurrected at the next term, they will be updated and revised and all the links are checked. And so right now, most of these are, you know, summer one summer guides. And in the discipline guides, I'll sh let me show you one really quick. Let's go take a look. So you can see we usually post the assignments here and then we will give them explanations on how they are to access from off campus. Right now it routes through Cardinal apps. It doesn't open them up to the app, it, uh, into the apps. It actually directs, directly takes them into the resource the same way we just discussed about eBooks and streaming videos. We give them a lot of guidance on these topics, writing and citing, including how to use RefWorks and APA manuals. And then the same more, only in a more broad sense, shows up in the discipline guides. Oops, let me get out of here. Ah, I have too many tabs. There we go. So in the discipline guides is where we have broad disciplines right now. EAP guides are the guides that I've created so that they only have electronic resources in them. They don't have any books re uh, referenced in them. And the English resources is a heavily used one because as I said, we um, do a session with all of the English classes. And uh, we go through all of the resources that, that they have access to. And hopefully they're going to um, remember some of this later on and we're catching a lot of them. In uh, EAP, a lot of people come in with their English credits, but we still are hoping they're gonna, we're gonna hit a lot of them with this information. So this is gonna be a more generalized guide on the, the, sub, on the, uh, the discipline of English, basically. And where I, and I always record these sessions and I stick them into the Zoom recordings. So the guides are always, these guides for disciplines are always here. They're always up and we do revise them, but they are always present and the students can come back in them and use them. So the, so the, the uh, Zoom recordings are here. They actually go get put into stream, uh, which is in Office 365 and it will do auto captioning. So that's a really nice feature that it, that it has. It'll auto caption the same way. It's much, it works a lot the same way as YouTube because you can um, upload your video. It doesn't create the video, but it has tools like captioning and then you can do an, get your embed code or a, a URL to, to send them to it. Then we also have a lot of topic guides over here and the topic guides are really um, for the UIW community at large. So they may cover events or even we have information about the 2020 census or COVID-19 resources, but we also have them for things like APA style and RefWorks and interlibrary loan and for faculty. So we have a lot of guides here um, for 
faculty, students, and the community at large. And you could certainly suggest your own topics for them as well, because we're always looking for resources um, to help the community with uh, certain with topics that are appropriate for them. Alright, so these are our research guides and they're variable and we can use them in a lot of different ways. Oh, and I meant to show you the resource tutorials. Let me show you the resource tutorials as well. Resource tutorials are here under tutorials. So the tutorials that are here were either created by us or they were um, come from the vendors, which are appropriate to be using because they will highlight if they don't if they will highlight how to search and how to use the features of the database. Um, this is one that I've created for criminal justice database. And then there's also this, which is a, which is how to use the FBI's uh, system. So that clearly comes from them. Uh, but there are a variety. And if you need a custom tutorial, then I would suggest talking to your um, liaison librarian about that. And find, they can help you find all kinds of resources that you need for your discipline. All right, so let's see, we're back in our presentation now. All right, the four faculty libguide. There's all kinds of good information here, how the, you can find streaming content, how to help, how to get out, uh, help with ex online tutorials, graphics for the students on remote use of the library, and information and libguides for your courses and assignments. So let's go take a look at it. Erin, can you hear me? Yes. You can hear me, great. I can hear you okay. now. Okay. okay. All right. It's your, you're my on. Apologies. My apologies. <laughs> we, I am still unable to launch Zoom, so I'm not sure where you are. What slide are you on? This I am is at, crazy. <laughs> I'm at your, I'm at your big, the, your big slide right now. So I'm glad you came. The four faculty okay. lib guide. Well, I've been trying to get on. I was muted. We finally figured out how to do that. Oh, so did you talk about the, the faculty lib guide right now? That's where I was headed. So you can okay. take that up if you would like. Well, first of all, let me apologize. I've been using Zoom for two months. I don't know what has to happen today. Uh, but the Four Faculty Lib Guide, of course, she was telling you has a lot of good information. But Erin, if you don't mind, go ahead and click and launch that guide for me. Sure. Let me know when you're there because I'm not seeing what you're seeing. Oh, yes, seeing. I'm there. <laughs> okay. okay, great. Uh, on the, what we tried to do with the four faculty libguide is put things in one convenient place for you. So this is in support <clears throat> mostly for your teaching um, and for information on how we help you with your teaching. So of course we can do this in whatever instructional modality you're using, but of course we're, we're really concentrating on online teaching right now. So those tabs at the top, the information literacy, really go into great detail on how we actually support your teaching. I'm sure Erin's already talked about the asynchronous and the synchronous. You can, put, you can embed us in Zoom and we can do a, a synchronous instructional session that would be recorded. Uh, we can do an asynchronous libguide uh, that can be recorded uh, in the learning management system. We use all of the systems that you do when you're teaching your students as well. The best thing I can tell you, and I'm sure she talked about this, were the course assignment libguides. And we're really happy. We, we piloted those last summer and we launched them this past year and have found out that this is a really popular way for us to tailor these information sources to either a specific assignment or a learning outcome. And so, and then we will put the information in there. So we, those are what some of the things we'll be uh, working on with you. But there's also information on here. If you look on the right, it says further resources. So if you're interested in, I'm teaching online and I really want to know what audio visual uh, materials are available, there's information there. Certainly the copyright libguide, which I will talk about a little bit in a minute, is, is a voluminous libguide with so much information and I will point out some things that you'll probably want to know. Did you talk about the pearls and permanent linking? Have you talked about that yet? We talked, I talked about it in the sense only of how they do it in Primo. Okay. One of the things, if you don't mind, go ahead and click on you, that web guide that says creating permalinks, because I think this is something that faculty will probably find very useful. Sure. And let, let me know when you're there. I'm there. Okay. Uh, this libguide, 
because not all vendors want, want to make things easy and have you do something in one similar way. The vendor who provides the content provides the methodology on how you capture a permanent link to a specific resource. So for example, if you are using CQ Researcher or you're in an EBSCO database or you're using uh, the Literature Resource Center from Gale, if you want students to go directly to that article or to that summary or to that review or whatever it is, there is a way for you to capture the link directly to that resource and that's called PERL, Permanent URL. And that's good for you in two ways. One, it keeps students from kind of getting lost and mucking around and not finding what you want them to, to actually have access to. But the other reason that it's good is that because we have licensed these resources for your use and your students' use, you don't have to worry about any kind of copyright concerns. So the PERL is a really good idea. Um, I'm not sure if there are any questions being asked, but uh, we're here. Sometimes it's a little tricky because we have to capture something that's called the proxy URL with a PERL. Some databases have that embedded and some of them don't and you have to add it and it will give you specific instructions on how to do that. So for example, will you click on, um, click on EBSCO databases for me? Yes, I'm there. Okay. So see, the, in, in some ways, they're beautiful, and they'll actually capture the pearl for you, and it shows you exactly where to go. See that little button down under number two that says permanent link? That's what we're talking about. That's the pearl. And then it will pop up this box that all you have to do is copy and paste that into your learning management system, your web page, or whatever, whatever you're using for your students. If you will notice at the front, it says that UIWTX, blah, blah, OCLC, that is what's called the proxy URL down to that question mark URL equal. So we, in, this database vendor is thoughtful and inserts that for you. And then this, the rest of that is the actual link to that article. So, and that's why we, if you need any assistance, the librarians are around to help you and we can help you figure out how to embed that. So that's one really good resource. Are there any questions about that? Okay. Uh, Aaron, would you go back to the main four faculty page? Yes. And let me know when you, let me know when you're there. Okay. I'm there. Okay. okay. So, so there are some other things on here that are important for faculty. Um, so we, we create graphics and step-by-step -step guides that you may want to use for your students if you want them to be able to work from home. We actually have created how do you get to these resources remotely. There's a lot of information about open educational resources and I will do a shameful plug because I have a workshop for that next week and I hope to see you there. Hopefully my technical issues will be resolved. Um, and then also we want you to know we're not just here for your students, we're here for you as well. So when you're working on research projects or you're looking for materials to use for your courses, the liaison librarians are really good about working with faculty to um, discern what we may have available and what might be available uh, through interlibrary loan or some other venue. And then there are uh, other kinds of things and hopefully we'll get back to normal. We'll be able to use a lot of them like the TechShare card. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the TechShare card, but we're a member of a statewide consortia that allows you to get this card and go directly to most of the time, it's another academic library, but it could be a large public library, and borrow materials directly from that library. So if you're out of the city or in Dallas or at a conference or whatever, the TechShare card will allow you to go to the University of Dallas or um, you uh, think it's UT Arlington and borrow things directly from them. So that TechShare card is also very helpful. Okay, I think I'm, think I'm done with the four faculty. We can move on. Okay. Unless there are questions. All right, so we did four faculty and we talked about embedding pearls. Now we are at copyright and its ilk. Okay, let's go to the copyright lib guide. All right. Now, I understand that there is no way in a few brief minutes I'm going to really be able to provide you with a broad overview of fair use copyright licensing intellectual property. And so that's not necessarily what this is about, but I did want you to see this libguide. And there's so much information on this that it can be absolutely overwhelming if you just look at this. But if you have a specific need, like if you really truly want to know about the Creative Commons, there is a tab here, which will give you much more information about that kind of licensing 
for open access and open educational resources. Most of the time, the questions that I've gotten from faculty about copyright is what is fair and what is fair and not fair. What could be covered under fair use and what would not? And I'm always going to tell you the same thing. The answer is it depends. It really kind of depends on what's called the four-pronged approach. And so we certainly can do more workshops on copyright if you're interested. But my best suggestion is if you run into an issue for copyright and licensing, contact your liaison librarians or me. I'm happy to help and try and sit down and, and talk this out with you. But we always say we're not giving legal advice because we're not attorneys. We can just kind of guide you in ways that we've had experience with over the last, in my case, almost three decades. So there's a lot of good information here about copyright. We will absolutely be talking about OER, not, not just next week, but a little bit today. So there's good information here. What I like to point people to are the brochures, which is the last little tab at the top. So if you're looking for information in a nutsh, in a little tidbit, then these brochures kind of synthesize it down for you. So copyright for faculty, these are things that we actually physically print off in hand, but there's a digital, these are the frequently asked questions that we get. Uh, if you're asking for information about copyright for your students, it's pretty similar to be honest with you. So there's information there. And then uh, the last one we've gotten is, of course, how do I, make sure that I'm within fair use and copyright licensing when I'm teaching online. And here's, these are all just the most common kinds of questions that we see. Okay, I think we're done with copyright unless I have any questions. All okay, right. well, like I said, the best thing I can do is tell you to contact one of the liaison librarians if you're not finding what you need in one of those tabs. Uh, the other thing that I really want to talk about, and I'm very excited that we're going to do a full workshop on this next week, are open educational resources. There's just a lot to know. So go ahead and click on, on the link to the LibGuide for me. Okay. We're there. All right. So open educational resources are, are things that you've probably heard about, but maybe not necessarily delve too much into. So I wanted to just show you this LibGuide that we've created for faculty. There are a lot, there's lots of good information, but one of the things that I always get asked for faculty is, what is the efficacy, what is the research on the impactfulness of an open educational resource compared to a commercial textbook? Because that's usually what we're talking about. Although the definitions of OER, and I want to point this out, is the university has had to define these terms specifically. So if you will click on defining OER, it should launch a document. Let me know if it does. Did it launch, Aaron? Yes, it did. Okay, and let me give you just a teeny bit of background about this. Is in, uh, I think either 2017 or 2018, the state passed legislation that was a Senate bill that said that universities, including private universities in the state of Texas, must identify courses in their registration and their course descriptions that are OER. So maybe not in the catalog, but in the schedule for the semester and in the registration system. If a course meets one of these definitions, we are supposed to identify it. So the first thing we did was come up with a common definition of what these terms mean. So open educational resource is, it's a a particular subset of a no additional cost, but it just means that it's a, either a public domain or it's been released under intellectual property license that allows all of the below. It allows you to freely use it, to adapt it, to reorganize it and redistribute it. And a lot of times that's referred to as the five R's. I'm sure you've heard this term, retain, remix, reuse, revise, and redistribute. And then it kind of tells you what OER is not. And, and I'm going to tell you why these are important to understand. OER does not include a commercial or a, a, a for-profit material. And it does not include copywritten materials that are made available with permission or licensing. So that's, in a nutshell, what it is. It's really not, it's not commercially copyrighted. And it's not something that allows you to use it through a purchase or a license. So, and then there are two other terms here that you may want to become familiar with. But again, like I said, we're going to have a lot more time to talk about this 
when we do our workshop next week, but I do want to point one other thing out. Can you go back to the main lib guide, Erin? Yes. Okay. So the only other thing I'll say is that we're, we have lots of OER out there that may or may not be appropriate, and you may or may not want to use it. Entire textbooks, entire courses, uh, maybe slides, other graphics, those kinds of things, the liaison librarian can help you begin to find and curate to see whether you really want to go down this path. But the research, if you'll click on OER, what does the research say? Yes, ma'am. And then there's one side I want you, there are articles here, research articles that have compared two things. They are looking at a, a complete analysis of the empirical studies of the effectiveness of OER on student learning outcomes and also the perceptions. And so there are some links there for articles you may be interested in. But click on more for me, Erin. Sure. And there's one thing I will point out to you, it's called Open Education Group. All of the research that they are now gathering about the eff efficacy and, and reliability of OER, this group gathers in one place. So this is a good thing to know. And that's about all the time I have for OER, I think. Okay. You can see there's lots of other tabs here and hopefully you can investigate them on your own time. All right, that brings us to communication with library staff. So right now, we currently are staffing from home and we are available eight to eight, Monday through Saturday and Sunday two to eight, which will continue and as into the future until something changes. We don't yet know when we'll be back on campus just like everyone else. So the discipline liaison uh, emails are here. Ask a librarian goes to the reference desk. The reference desk is being monitored and chat is being monitored. So when you are at our homepage and you see this little button down here that says, have a question, ask us, that's the chat. And so you can contact us through the reference desk, which rings through to voicemail. So if you get the voicemail, please leave one because as you know, the Ring Central will transcribe it, the, the, the e and it will show up in our email, which is being monitored. So both of the um, email and the, and the chat, texting to this number goes to the chat as well. Those are being monitored right now and all of the discipline liaison librarians are working from home. Therefore, their phones are forwarded and will ring through to their phones at home and they will be checking their email. So those are our main ways of co communication. Uh, we don't have any telepathy, but we're working on it. <laughs> the, the only other thing I was gonna say is that we are going to provide the, the PowerPoint with all the hyperlinks to the CTL, the Center of Teaching and Learning, and they can distribute it out to, to all the attendees. Susan, does that sound okay? That's fine. Can you, if you have a link to it, you can put it in the chat as well. Okay, uh, we, I don't think we have the PowerPoint up yet, but we can figure out how to do that. Just send I it have to it. We'll okay. it from there. I'll do that. I, add, I sent it to Kathy Bataro, but I, we added a slide since then. So I will share that with you and get it to you. Okay, great, thanks. And we've got a so, in chat. Yeah, we, we have time for, for questions if anybody has any. Yes, ma'am. Um, my name is Donald Sikazwe. I'm in the pharmacy world over there. And I Hello. have a question about the uh, text uh, share card. What yes. does that, how does that work? Is that similar to Iliad, but the Texas well, version of it? No, text share, it stands, you know, we have, a, we're a consortium with the state called text share. And the text share card is a physical card. So you go into your library and uh, they, they make sure you're in good standing with them. So you go to your home library, you say, I'm gonna be traveling in the state and I'd like a text share card and, and the card's usually good for a year. So we will give you a card and there, there's policies for the lending library. So for example, let's say that you're in Austin for a week and you want to use that text, text share card at the University of Texas. But then we have a link to their policies that say you may borrow blank materials from the University of Texas with your texture card. So you will know exactly what you can get from that texture card because that policy will be online and we will we will point all of that out to you. So all you have to do is go to your home library, 
tell them that you're traveling within the state of Texas and you'd like to get a tech share card. And then they will give you a tech share card and it's good for one year. And you are responsible for returning those materials directly back to that institution as well. And so it kind of works like interlibrary loan. It just, it allows you to go and borrow things directly. So I hope that answered your question. And they do have yes, a website, it's a service you. through the state library. So they have, a, they have a website that will give you all of that information as well if you needed, needed that. Now, see, that's a good point. What I will do is make sure that information on the tech share card is more prominent on the four faculty lib guide. So thank you yeah. for asking that question. Definitely, we had more than one person ask too. And we had someone okay. ask in the chat as well. Okay, yeah, that, that four faculty, that uh, tech share card is worth its, its weight. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other, yes, any other questions? And I'm sorry that I, I had all my technical issues. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Well, we made it. I tried. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> and I'm still having issues. I still can't get on. I've tried like four or five times and still oh, can't get on. Man. Of course. Well, the good news is we're here and we're going to be here for a while. So if you need us, please do contact us. Is that it? All right. If anybody has any questions, please contact us. Contact your... Um, liaison librarian. Hope this, hope this was helpful to highlight our resources for you. Thank, thank you so you much. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Oh, thank you. And thank we'll you. be sending out the PowerPoint. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye-bye. Right, thank Bye. you. Bye. Hey, Aaron, I'll call you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> And then, Susan, do you want, should we talk about tomorrow a little bit? Yeah. If people oh, are free. Let's see. To, oh, yeah. What is, is the, the, oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're, tomorrow's session is going to be kind of our first foray into the issue of accessibility. And uh, is um, a federal mandate that is growing in intensity that says when you use digital resources in teaching, you need to make them accessible to um, a wide range of users. So it's a little different than accommodations where a particular person says, you need to accommodate me in this way or that way. Here, this is a little more forward looking and Incarnate Word has lots of tools that are very easy to use that will help you with that task. Is that a pretty good, uh, does that sound like a fair uh, commercial for the upcoming thing, Kathy? Yeah, it's absolutely more than fair. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, sounds good. Yeah. And it's going to be a two-part thing. So we'll start this Friday, and we're going to pick up the same topic in more detail, a little more nuances the following Friday. Mm -hmm. Emphasis yeah. is on stuff we own that's easy to use. Right. We're just going to use Microsoft tools, and I don't think people realize the uh, capacity or, or some of the tools that we have and, how, and uh, how cool they are. And that's why the tagline is, it's accessibility is easier than you think. Right. Um, when you have yeah. tools that are kind of all embedded and they're already there, then exactly. that's good to know. Are you guys going to talk about the stream? We're going to talk about stream next week. Yeah. Stream is awesome. Second week. Yeah. Stream I've only, week is week two. Week two. Yeah. Week two. It's, it's, it's good uh, to know how to use it. It's really easy to use. So You know, it is yeah. for uh, closed captioning and transcription. Yeah. Just, right. Because uh, yeah. I was just using Kaltura to do it as a place to park things, but it doesn't caption. So that right. was something I'd already been trying to solve. Right. That's the beauty of, that's the beauty of stream. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, great. thank you, Erin. Okay. It's like we planned Terrific. to do, but we didn't. <laughs> I know. I'm, it's good that I, I had a few notes on what Trace on Tracy's part about what she was going to say, so that I could at least go, "Oh yeah, she was going to say this." <laughs> oh man. Okay. Anywho, <laughs> I'll try to make it tomorrow. That sounds interesting. It should be but, interesting. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you all, all right. Bye bye. And and thanks everybody. Thank you. Yes. Thank you all for coming. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.